who was listening or watching the Arethusa waterhole cam last night and she said at around 3.30 a.m., which was about three hours ago, she heard buffalo bellowing and she seems to think that lion could have potentially caught one. It's quite a characteristic sound and it certainly is possible. The Solala Breakaway Pride have been spending time very close to Arethusa. They actually killed a fully grown male giraffe and finished that off about a day and a half or yesterday or just the day before that. And there's a strong chance maybe they have caught the buffalo. There's 13 lions in that pride. So without further ado, let's go and look for them. We're quite a way off still, but it's exciting prospects. And we can head across there with that great intelligence. Now, some of you may be joining for the very first time and it's great to have you with us. It's important to know that it is a live safari, so it's happening this very second. And not only is it live, but it's interactive. So please send through your thoughts, comments, and questions through to hashtag Safari Live on Twitter, or you can send an email through to questions at wildearth.tv. It's a great way for us to interact, so please do try even though your questions may not necessarily be answered because many many people are watching and sending through questions it's still worth sending them through and hopefully we will be able to address at least some of them well brent tells me that he had a dream about finding a leopard last night so Hopefully his dream comes true and he said not only did he dream about finding a leopard but he actually knows the specific road that he found it on on the stream so he's going to be checking Gallego shortcuts and even though we both have kind of rough plans for the morning to find certain animals and go certain places those plans often change so don't be surprised if you see either of us doing U-turns and heading off in the opposite direction we were initially planning on. Because it is an unscripted safari and we have to kind of make the most of whatever the animals are doing, we have to be quite flexible. I hope you all enjoyed the fireside chat last night and for those of you who couldn't join, just to let you know that Jamie, our new presenter, will be joining our team as of today and you can look forward to meeting her in the next couple of days. She's just going to be familiarizing herself with the whole operation and spending some time with all the different roles, the cameramen, the presenters and the directors and final control just to get an idea of all the different jobs that are done in order to get this broadcast to you but on possibly Wednesday or Thursday she'll be out on the road again leading a safari with you and she's going to bring a great dynamic to our team so exciting new prospects as Wild Earth and Safari Live begins to expand We're going to continue on towards Arethusa and while we do, Brent would like to say good morning to all of you. So jump on with him and we will catch up a little bit later. and welcome on this live safari my name is i have a genre on camera with me and uh we are up near our northern boundary at the moment uh last night we could hear five big male lions calling as well as this is that area where we're looking for leopard tracks so hopefully we find the tracks of something uh to all our regular viewers welcome uh, to our new viewers, we 
are on a live safari, you all also are looking for trucks at the moment. Also, I had Scott mentioned that I had a dream last night that I was going to find a male leopard in this general vicinity. So, fingers crossed on that. And also, uh, it is one of our tech geniuses, Alex's birthday. So, and he's out here in the bush with us at the moment. So, a big happy birthday to Alex. And there are no lion tracks. So what we're going to do is we're going to check a little bit further to the sort of west and see if they might have cut onto one of those big elephant paths that leads towards Sydney's waterhole. It's amazing the colors you get at this time of the year. I'm just going to stop once we get up onto this next rise. You can actually almost see the dust layers as the sun starts to rise and the light catches them. And you can barely make out the Drakensberg Mountains in the distance with the amount of dust uh, that is in the atmosphere and it gives us incredible pastel colors in the early morning before the sun peeps above the horizon Well, we've spent so much time with Inkahuma Pride this week, and when we left them, they had those grotesquely large bellies. And Maggie in Vancouver is wondering how long it'll take them to digest. Uh, lions have an incredibly fast digest digester system, and that makes them able to take advantage on kills. So I would say they're probably going to be looking like normal lions, maybe not today, but definitely by tomorrow. Um, those hugely distended bellies will probably be down to sort of normal size they'll still look like they've eaten um but they won't be as well let me think of a nice way to say it obese as as they were um over the last few days so we're going to continue on and look for tracks we might get lucky and catch a, a late hippo coming back towards the water So we always check these game paths, quite a lot of animals will use them and there's two really big game paths up ahead that I've found the tracks of the Birmingham boys on before. Morning uh, tax, no updates yet, uh, one station Gaga shortcut to Bogus Hook following up on possible Konzo of the 500 Angara uh, and one station to Zoe's through to the west following up on Kohuma in Torchwood and we all said uh, last you heard those Birmingham Marauders were heading south. Um, with other guides letting them know what has been taken so we don't all focus in the same area and we spool chance of finding um standing by
Well, that is not the update I was looking for this morning. Um, and I'm quite sure at those two big game paths coming up ahead, we're going to find the tracks of those Birmingham boys. They have crossed miles. They've done a probably about seven, seven kilometers to where they've been found now. Um, so well beyond Arethusa they've gone. So unfortunately, I will try to show you their tracks. It seems like the Birminghams continue to evade me. No late hippos. So lions can move incredible distances and it, it just depends um, in what sort of frame of mind and especially five young males like that that are busy trying to establish territory um, can cover bigger distances. They are able to do about 20 kilometers in, in, an, in an evening, but it's very unusual. Um, uh, and even seven kilometers for this part of the world is quite a long walk. Uh, normally, uh, they average sort of five, five kilometers in an evening, but it all just depends on what's been going on. Uh, the Birminghams have started calling quite a lot, um, and I'm wondering if they heard the Majinga lines calling in the west, uh, and they've decided to see if they can test their luck with that male coalition. So very interesting times ahead with what ha what is happening with the lions. Uh, I'm just a little bit disappointed that they keep evading me. And I'm pretty sure I'm going to find it. Now, see, this is where things get confusing. We'll come back. There are male lion tracks going that way when I'm expecting to find male tracks going that way. It is possible they might have tried to chase um, hippo or something in this area last night. That's the wonderful thing about a coalition of male lions that's so big. They are able to take down big prey and regularly. So it doesn't look like they crossed where I thought they are. There is a male line track back there. We're going to go have a look at it now. Oh, look at that. And the sun is peeping up above the horizon. On the subject of the Birmingham boys, um, Blair's wondering if I have seen them on my travels back to Manuleti, um, or travels from the Manuleti to here in the early morning or late evening. I have not, Blair. The, I, when I say they evaded me, they have completely evaded me. I have not even seen them off air. So they're sort of my nemesis lions at the moment. And isn't that a beautiful, beautiful sunrise? Almost looks like the sky is on fire. So guys, we're just going to keep quiet and watch the sun pop over the horizon.
Wasn't that incredible, guys? Um, it also gives us a wonderful chance to sit and listen for possible alarm calls. Uh, you guys might have had, heard some birds. There was a, a virtual starling I can hear and a grey go-away bird. So not too many birds and not the nicest calls either of them. But it's still nice to have a bit of that dawn chorus. So let's go follow up on a leopard. Hopefully uh, my prove to be a savant and my dreams come true. So let's go see if we can find some leopard tracks. But don't worry, I haven't forgotten about showing you that big male lion track. Step into position to show you the track. The best one's going to be that one there, John. Are you going to be able to get it, or are we too close? <laughs> that one there. Good. So the tracks of all the Birminghams are here. Um, but there's one that's nice and easy to show you guys, so I'm going to show you that one first. There we go, and you see how incredibly massive that is. And if I put my handprint next to it, that is a really big male lion. Um, and Nancy in Reno was wondering if the Birmingham boys happened uh, to be in the same area as the Inkahumas, which for the Inkahumas, fortunately they're not. Um, they've gone quite far to the west, and the Inkahumas have headed to the east. Um, but would this spell trouble for Junior? It would spell trouble for the whole pride, Nancy. Uh, it would be quite... Uh, if those Birmingham boys got hold of Junior, I think it would be tickets for Junior, I'm afraid. Um, he would definitely have to run before they managed to get their claws into him, because five male lions, um, finding a young male lion like that, they would probably rip him completely to pieces. Uh, and even those two sub-adult females might be in a bit of trouble, even though they are sort of getting to age where they might be ignored. Um, but always in the beginning when pride takeovers happen, there is a lot of fighting even between the lionesses and the males. And the lionesses quite often will just try and move away from them and stay out of their way. Um, but it is a really exciting time to be watching lions. So we know these Birminghams have disappeared. So I think it's time to go see if we can find any leopard tracks and see if we can make my dreams come true. And the hippo's laughing at me. Mm. Oh, 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 oh. He obviously thinks... Ah, oh, he's probably laughing at the fact that the Birmingham's have evaded me again. So what we're going to do now is we're going to zigzag through these roads around here. Um, this is the area where Aubrey had those tracks of that male leopard thing into the area yesterday. So we're going to hopefully find some tracks of them coming out. Uh, if not, we'll just keep slowly working our way, zigzagging on the roads through this area and hopefully we will find tracks somewhere.
move, Mr. Hornbill. So, we chatted in depth quite a bit last night about the Inkahuma's buffalo hunt. Uh, and Claire in New York said she couldn't watch it. And she knows it's nature, uh, but she just couldn't watch it. Do they actually, do the buffalo actually suffer um, as much as it seems they do? Okay, that's a, it's a very interesting question. It's a debate that has been had around many campfires in Africa many times. Um, there's some people who say that they are able to feel through those uh, situations. I'm more of the, of the tendency to believe that they actually go into a state of shock. Um, they are panicked and whatnot, but I don't think they possibly feel um, everything. Obviously, they are in huge dis distress. I mean, having a, a lion sink its canines through your nose uh, must be an incredibly painful thing uh, but i do think in that in that stage the, the adrenaline is pumping um, and they have got into a state of shock uh, so i'm not sure how much they feel it's it's, it's a very uh, difficult thing to be sure of um, but I, I personally think they do get into a state of shock and it is sometimes a very difficult thing to watch um, these apex predators that we we find from time to time making a kill so it is, I understand why you can't watch it, um, but it is nature taking its course and without the buffalo, um, the lions would be very, very hungry by now. So we have an impala sunrise. How's that? Where? There? see they're all fluffed up um, so they look a bit darker than they normally do during the warmer times and they're actually catching the air between uh, their body and uh, their skin and they're making a little institute of blanket around them Impala is such a fascinating animal um, the most numerous antelope south of the Sahara there you go here comes a nice male into shot hoarding his harem but a lot of that competition and the rutting season's over so the males are far less protective over their groups of females um, and will tolerate other males in the vicinity now. And come November, we'll be having lots of little babies running around. Oh, it looks like he just noticed we're here. Little male. Oh, and off they move. and quite thick bush so we're going to continue on one of our alarm systems in the bush is in Pala, uh, and we utilize a lot of the the herbivores or prey species to help us locate the predators um, if they do spot a leopard or a lion they will alarm call at it lots of snorting so hopefully we hear some alarm calls a little later. So no tracks on Sandy Patch, which is a really nice road to see tracks on. I have still got a sneaky suspicion that we're going to find tracks on the access road. And if it is Tingana, 
they're going to go onto Impala Road. So we're going to have a careful look around there. Quite interesting, we're just discussing where the Birmingham boys have, have moved off to. And they've moved into what's traditional uh, Majingalan territory. For those of you not sure who the Majingalans are, or the Majingis, as they are quite well known in the in the Sabi signs. It's a coalition of four male lions that's to the west and to the south of us. Um, and John from California is wondering uh, why the Birminghams would go try to uh, take on a four male coalition when the Matimbas are a two-male coalition. Well, John, I think what they're doing is that they're more testing out the area at the moment. So they'll go down there and they roar. If they roar and then they suddenly hear four roars in response, they might come scuttling back. Um, and they've been testing out. I think they're just testing the area before they sort of make a, a full play at taking over a, 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 a home range or a territory from other male lions. They are getting to that right edge now. They're nearly five. I think they're about five years old. So there is a strong chance um, that in the next couple of months they are going to take a, a chance at one of the male coalitions uh, in the area. I do think it is going to be the Matimbas. That's my personal thing, but I could be completely wrong. Uh, and animals often do that to you, prove you completely wrong. So that's what I think is going to happen. I think it makes um, more sense for them to go after the... Uh, the Matimba, and they do seem to spend a lot more time in what is traditionally Matimba male territory. Now you, oh no, I was hoping you were going to get to test the, the zoom on the new camera there, Jean-Jacques. Sorry guys, just uh, I was completely distracted there. A little Gabar goshawk flew past us with a mouse in its talons. So unfortunately, I was hoping it was going to land, but it didn't. Sorry guys, I'm just listening to the game drive radio for a second. Sorry, if I missed that update, please go again. Copy, thanks very much. Well, not quite the update we were looking for again this morning, but I'm sure um, quite a few of you will be very happy to know uh, that the quarantine uh, young male leopard has been spotted to the south of us. So he is still doing well and healthy. I haven't heard from, about, from him for, uh, about him for a while. So to, I'm sure a lot of you guys will be very happy to know that he is still doing well and seems to be healthy and is just to the south of Juma. Copy tucks, um, confirm how many stations there. Copy thanks, I'm gonna be making my way towards that position. So guys, um, we're going to go have a look at something now and I wonder who can guess where we're going and it's a carnivore, but which carnivore is the secret? So you can send your guesses through to questions at wildearth.tv or use the hashtag Safari Live on Twitter. of those five Birmingham Matildas across the west and uh, around Sydney's dam.
Ah, false alarm. We're going to continue on. I thought I heard some alarm calls. Continuing on on our discussion we've been having about male lines and specifically with these young Birmingham males that are in that stage where they are um, looking for territory. Um, Bree was wondering, do they have specific requirements that they look for? Uh, large territory, lots of females, weak defense. Uh, that they do, but in a situation where you have five males like the Birmingham, that is a really strong coalition and can take on most most other male line coalitions in this area um, especially because they are younger um, so faster younger all that jazz and they are definitely I uh, will definitely look for the maximum amount of females but the thing is with the coalition like um, with the Birmingham's if they can they could even possibly take over a much bigger area than say the Matimbas because there is five of them and quite often uh, quite often what happens like what happened with the, the Mapoho is that they would all then split in their coalition and two would sort of stay in the east, two in the west, two in the north um, and they would come together from time to time to defend their territory against other lines um, but they will sort of sort of spread out and that enables them to cover a far bigger distance. I don't know, but it seems to be getting colder for me. Maybe I shouldn't have mocked Jean-Ray in his blanket. So while we make our way towards this mystery sighting, we're gonna cross across to Scotty, uh, see what he's been up to, uh, and we'll be back with you a little later. Well, I wonder what it is exactly that Brent is heading to. I'm quite intrigued myself, as I'm sure a lot of you are as well. Now, we don't have any exciting plans like Brent does at this stage, but that could change at any moment. But what I do have is some really interesting news, and I'm not exactly sure what's going on, but it sounds like the Birmingham Coalition of Mayor Lions are north of Arethusa on a property called Sibambili, and it sounds like they have chased another line from possibly the Shimungwe Pride, which is a pride we don't really see very much. But it sounds like there's some kind of a lion battle going on. It's manic on the radio because the guides are so all so excited and all trying to rush over there. Sadly, we can't go there, but still interesting stuff. And I believe you were looking at tracks of the Birmingham Coalition earlier with Brents. It appears they've moved probably about three or four miles um, to get to where they are now. And some really exciting action unfolding. But we cannot get there. But still interesting for us to know what's going on with the lion in the area we drove through the last position the last area where we had Sindila, a young male leopard a cub of shadow had no sign of him there so we just continued our way meandering through the Murakini drainage and are now planning our next destination which will probably be along the western boundary of Arethusa 
in the hope that we may f find some sign of the Anderson male leopard. So we're just going to get ourselves into an area where he has been seen, where he is seen, but his territory is huge, so he may not be around today. But by getting into that area, we increase our chances greatly of seeing him. And it would be wonderful to see him again because we've only seen him once before and it was a very brief sighting. No reports of any lion on a buffalo kill. But we did get a report from Lynn, that I mentioned a little bit earlier, saying that she did hear buffalo bellowing, so possibly some lion buffalo interaction. And who knows, it's possibly just because the guides have yet to go into that area. It's a massive area that we all get to and depending on which road the various guides drive, we may not know what's going on just yet. Liam's got some lion tracks on the road here, well spotted Liam. Which way were they heading? Um, same direction as us. Okay, well he says that we're heading in the same direction as us, so we shall continue forward, although I cannot see any of the tracks yet, they could be weaving on and off the road. Oh, here we go. So it looks like tracks of at least one male lion going down this road. They don't look like they're a good example to share with you. And because you've already been looking at lion tracks with friends, I'm not going to force the issue to try and show you these tracks because they're in the shade and without sunlight it can be difficult to see tracks especially on this road which only has a fine film of dust over it so it's not a clear depression Welcome back everyone, uh, sorry about that, it seems like Scotty's fighting with some gremlins but you've arrived at the perfect time, uh, we are busy coming in to the hyena den I just heard that it was quite active, so we've come to have a look so let's hope there's lots of playfulness going on and a lot of cuteness with the cubs so I haven't spent much time at the hyena den recently, I've been stuck with lions I know, how terrible is that, imagine that um, so I'm quite excited to spend a bit of time at the hyena den now and especially after that really amazing behavior Scott witnessed the other morning so it seems like I'm getting a little predictable and most of you guessed that I was on my way to the hyena den I'm definitely gonna have to mix it up a bit next time There we go. Oh, there's big game coming in. High speed hyenas being chased. <laughs> that little guy doesn't look like he's, it looks like it's in trouble. Um, it does, that didn't look too serious. It looked more fun. So the den is very active again this morning, uh, which is wonderful. Lots of happy looking hyenas and there is that little bundle of joy. A 
And there comes another little sub-adult. Well, still a cub, really. Um, we probably only classify hyenas as a sub-adult once it's over a year old. But these are the little hubcap thieves. Oh. Sandra, come to the left. There's a, a lot of chasing. Now there's two adults chasing each other around as well. Um, we can't really see them. They're off to the back a bit. But some interesting behavior happening. Figure out exactly what's going on. Oh, stay away from my tires, little one. Oh, now it's double trouble. So, wow, we have got wonderfully active hyenas around us. Lisa G said she, when she, the drive started, she asked and hoped we were going to see some hyena activity. So, Lisa G, I'm happy to oblige. Um, we had a nice, very active hyena den. mouth of the den you can see there's an an adult and the mother is lying and blocking the den again but not stopping the adult from greeting the the cub affirmative um at the music I had is active there we go and it's amazing how brave these little guys become and quite quickly, uh, especially when there, there are some adults around. And see, that adult is actually so, showing submission to that little cub. Um, so quite interesting. And you can see the mother is, is tolerating that adult around the cub. The mother is the one lying in the hole. Um, so it... That sort of possibly lends to what we have been thinking at the moment, that uh, that cub is a daughter of the alpha uh, or matriarch and therefore is quite a high-ranking individual, even though it is a baby. We've got some more playing off to the left here, right in front of the vehicle, Jean-André. A little bit of a game going on there between one of the cubs and another individual. Doesn't look too serious. Oh, getting in on the action. Oh, got it by the tail. Shame. <laughs> so, just generally how one of these... <laughs> lifting it off the ground. Um, it's difficult to say, but just generally how the one of these cubs gets treated. Um, it's possibly a young male. And being, being, being a young male hyena is not a good thing. You are the bottom of the food chain. You can see that submissive pose. And it doesn't cackle and make too much noise because that will probably excite the others and increase the beating. But obviously, get, get a little nip in there, put a payback nip while the other two are concentrating on each other. It is amazing the social interaction that social predators have. I think if we come... With another adult hyena arriving. Um, 
the little cub is watching it quite intently. And it'll be interesting to see what's about to happen. Because now mom's also lifted her head. Mom has let the cub greet this adult, but she's not entirely... Just watch her ears. So her ears are quite flat. So... So it's the one standing at the entrance that's making those noises. We're just going to sit quietly and listen and, and try to figure out what's going on at the moment. There's another adult coming in as well. Another two adults, actually. So we've got at least five adults that I can see at the moment. Big game going on. <laughs> Tackle. Left off the termite mound. There we go. I think it's the same one who was being bullied a little earlier. All of a sudden, the other three, or two adults have headed off well, they're just waiting on the edge there, so we're just going to sit quietly and figure out what's going on. Um, it's nice to have so many adults here. So we can see... Oh, hello, little one. Um, there's quite a lot of movement around the den. And we can see quite a few adults. So Dave, Dave is wondering, what is the size of an adult hyena um, an adult female can weigh up to about 80 kilograms the heaviest one um, I've ever weighed believe it or not I've weighed a few hyenas it's a strange thing to have done um, when we were doing um, predator research it was 92 kilogram but it did have a belly completely full of hippo meat and look at the baby chewing on mom's ear We're getting some more vocalizations again. No, they stopped. And it's a, 
amazing when you find around a hyena den any little branch that can be chewed is often chewed so you'll find lots of chewed off little branches around a hyena den site So there's quite a lot of activity on the other side of the den with those uh, sub-adults or those young young cubs, those about six, seven months old. I know they're coming towards us now, or one of them is at least. But there's still quite a lot of bullying and playing, so I'm just going to move around a little bit. We will come back to check on the tiny guy. Oh, there's really nice activity. I can just hear the running in the, in the leaves. quite a distinct smell you get around a spotted hyena den uh, very different from a brown hyena den um, brown hyena dens are a lot a lot more smelly uh, and they tend to bring a lot more carrion and carcasses back to the den so around a brown hyena den you'll often have lots of skulls and things like that uh, around a spotted hyena den not too much um, but the smell coming from the den is Almost like a very dirty dog um, mixed in with a very moldy cupboard coming out in front of us, uh, running around in, in the bushes, unfortunately. Let's just try to get a bit forward and see what they're up to there. See, there's another adult female. Lots of lots of hyenas here. I actually think some have left and new ones have come in. Quite a interesting scenario happening at the moment. So we can see. I th I think we've got about six adults. Um, we've got those three sort of cubs that are about s between six and seven months old. And then we've got obviously the tiny little guy who's probably getting closer to a sort of month old now. Maybe a little bit younger than a month still. Um, and Wendy from Florida was wondering how many hyenas would share a den? Well, it would be one clan, Wendy, and clan size varies on the area. The biggest clan I'm <laughs> aware of, sorry, there's hyenas running all around me. The, the biggest clan. Oh, and they're coming out in the front now. And back again. That poor little guy is being chased properly this morning. <laughs> Shame. He, 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 every time he thinks he's got away, <laughs> she just keeps coming. safety <laughs> or maybe not no chased by a different hyena around the back so I'm gonna try again oh there we go again sorry Wendy uh, back to your question Wendy was wondering how many hyenas could possibly share a den Hello, Amnesi. Um, and the largest clan of hyenas I know about that I've actually seen uh, was in northern Botswana. And it was a clan of 90 um, individuals. And they were sort of a super clan. Generally, I think in this area, the biggest clans that are, uh, are seen regularly are about between 30 and 40. So 
genre is doing a sterling job, but it is quite difficult to keep up with all the, the commotion around here. And here comes one of the little hubcap thieves. I would guess this clan, in total, is possibly somewhere between 15 and 20 individuals. So quite a nice sized clan. Uh, but difficult to be exactly sure. Hyenas are very difficult to um, distinguish from each other. So we just had a, a good view of one of the hubcap thieves. Um, and Edward was wondering, do any other young animals play with the vehicles like hyenas do? Um, I have had leopard cub once um, do that, but you generally try to discourage leopards and lions from doing that. Um, hyenas are less likely to sort of climb inside a car and not really equipped with that sort of climbing ability that uh, the cats have. So I don't really know of other animals that really sort of engage with a vehicle like hyena cubs do. Sounds like they're getting a hiding behind us. I'm just going to reverse. Keeping me on my toes here at the end this morning. Hello. Jean-Dre, where are they at the moment? Oh, of course, they're all over there now. Okay, we're gonna try and get you in the spot now. Oh, and straight down the hole, there's here we go. There's gonna be some action here now. There's this. Unfortunately, there's a stick in the way, but um, at least we can see sort of what's going on. So, one of those sort of seven-month-old cubs has sort of tried to get into the den where the small cub is, but is not succeeding. The other cub managed to get through another into another hole. It's showing submissive behavior. It's in hope that the, the, these others will stop pulling it. Uh, I think it is possibly a male cub, just generally from the way um, it is being so heavily bullied at the moment. Really being manhandled this morning. Oh, and then the next one. So it seems like they're definitely manhandling the one far more than the others. Uh, and that could possibly be a male-female thing. And oof. Oh, now they man. This one's manhandling the next one. Uh, it's, that's one of the things. It's so difficult to sometimes figure out who's who and what's going on in the social hierarchy of hyenas. But we definitely are making headway. And spending time at the den and being able to witness this type of behavior is the best way to try to figure that stuff out.
Escape! Now, some playing going on between two adults there. Um, sometimes adults playing can turn quite serious. And look at those little guys playing in the den there. And you can see the one who's been bullied quite heavily is even being bullied by the cub that's about the same age. And that could definitely be that one's a female and one's a male. We've been seeing quite a lot of interesting interaction this morning. Uh, and Nancy uh, just commented that it's, it's always great uh, to see this, uh, this wonderful interaction between the hyenas. And uh, Nancy was also wondering, would an adult ever come in quite aggressively and cause problems? Um, or, and are all these hyenas related? Uh, I would say most of them are related. The females will be related. It is a sort of a matriarchal society. And the males are, the young males are the ones that dis disperse. And if I was a young male and I got treated like that constantly, I would also definitely think about leaving home. But there can be aggression, and quite often that's power plays between the clan. Uh, and as you can see, hyenas can pick up a pick on an individual. I mean, these three adults who are abusing the poor little guy there, um, they seem to be quite similarly ranked. And they're not really showing any obvious um, displays of uh, dominance or, or submission to each other. And they are, they are playing with each other as well, but as well as abusing cubs. None of this uh, is too serious this morning. It's more, uh, more play than anything else. But sometimes it can turn quite serious quite quickly. So quite a lot of times with a lot of animals, the playing, especially when it comes to testing, uh, a lot of it might be testing the, the strength and power of another individual to see if there is a chance to sort of jump a, a, a level on the, on the social ladder. Another vehicle has come to join us to enjoy this hyena interaction this morning. But it does seem to be calming down a bit now. There's only four adults left, and there were probably six when we arrived. And there's, there's, that, oh, there's another one still sleeping behind us, so 
have five adults left. I did see two move off, so that means there possibly were seven adults here when we arrived. But this behavior has been fascinating. I think that other vehicle might have driven over lion or leopard dung, just judging by that adult's behavior to it. And you can see she's sniffing at the tires behind them. And obviously, smelling another predator quite close to the den can sometimes get them a bit excited. But it seems like she's decided it isn't. It isn't a leopard or a lion in the den site. Could have even possibly driven over other hyena den, a hyena dung, but that might have got a very different reaction if they smelt another hyena from another clan close to the core area of their clan. Bullying begins again. They're not biting particularly hard. They're not breaking the skin. But I'm pretty sure it is still quite uncomfortable for that little guy who's been dragged around by his neck, by his leg, by his tail. And the thing is, if he were to get a little bit aggressive and snappy with him, it would be definitely be to his detriment. He would get an absolute sorting out from these others. And it hasn't stopped since we've arrived. It's just they've kept on hounding on that that particular little individual more so than any others. But it does look like everything is slowing down a little bit here as it gets a bit warmer. And there are some other vehicles who are looking to hopefully come to the hyena den. So, um, We'll spend another minute or two and then we're going to move off and we're going to go slowly head towards what's left of that buffalo carcass uh, from the Inkahuma Pride uh, and see if possibly any hyenas visited it overnight and see if the tracks there can tell us a story about what else has started to feed on that after the lions have left. So as things slow down here, guys, we're going to move on and go see if we can see what tracks tell a story at that buffalo carcass that the Inkahuma Pride finished yesterday. Uh, and hasn't it been wonderful being here at the den? And quite often with these now, after I think you start figuring out what's happening here, now you've got to start all over again because now we had three adults who weren't showing submission or dominance over each other, but we're all building a young cub. So I think I'm going to have to have a long chat with Scott and Steph. I'm going to have to try to figure out what's going on here. Cheers guys, enjoy. So as we depart from the hyena den, um, we notice that young six, seven month old cub being highly 
abused there and Matt is Texas is wondering what happened to them there used to be three of them well Matt all three of them were there it was quite difficult to see because they were running in and out in a way but all three were present in the den so uh, they're all doing well and at various times we did see all three of them uh, so they are all three there and doing well and Matt also wondered if they'd gone away to join the main den uh, Matt this would be the main den uh, of the hyenas at the moment so this is their main den and this is the main sort of area for social activity in the clan Oh, I can't believe it guys, no leopard tracks have been seen yet this morning but we will fight the good fight and continue on uh, and hopefully we will find some tracks at some point other if we don't there's still such a wonderful array of things to discuss and I think it's nearly time for some birding as well noticed all those hyenas around the den there and dear in Miami uh, was wondering whether what would happen if other predators approached the den would the hyenas um, adults try to get into the hole with the babies to hide from them uh, would they stay outside and try to defend the den um, it completely depends normally they would I have seen hyenas mob lions that come close to close to the den uh, but the only lionesses but if a male lion comes uh, the cubs will go inside and the adults will disappear in every direction uh, leopard will quite often walk past if they do see a leopard close to the den they will definitely chase it uh, but generally they will adults will not go into the den uh, they will try to stay away from that uh, there isn't much space in there so they'd rather give the, the youngsters a chance to sort of get into the safety of the den uh, they would either then mob the animal chase it away or um, they would uh, run away if it was a position where they might possibly take on serious injury So, um, still on the topic of hyenas, and now adding a re one of my favorite topics in wild dogs. Peter from Switzerland uh, would like to know what is the main difference between hyenas and wild dogs? Well, Peter, there's quite a lot of differences. Um, they are actually not even closely related. Um, a wild dog is a part of the dog family, whereas a hyena is actually probably more closely related to mongoose um, than it is to uh, dogs. Um, and they've split from those, obviously, their ancestors a long, long time ago. Um, hyena have a very different sort of uh, social uh, structure to, to wild dogs. Um, they are a matriarchal society where the females are heavily dominant and even physically bigger. Um, where there is in wild dogs, the male will be bigger uh, and they have an alpha pair. And only the alpha pair will breed, whether it's in hyenas or um, all the hyenas and female hyenas in the clan will breed at different times so and obviously from a looks point of view wild dog are not spotted they're sort of blotched with lots of different colors um, I will get a picture uh, <coughs> excuse me for you 
and it'll take me a little bit, so I'm just going to move my way towards the water hole before I do that. So while we make our way towards the water hole, uh, we're going to cross across to Scotty and see what he's been up to and if he's had any luck in Arethusa this morning. Welcome back and I must say I'm really interested to hear a little bit more about the sighting you've just shared with Brent at the Hyena Den. It sounds like a lot of action there and also interesting to see that that little tiny cub is beginning to get bolder and venturing further away from its burrow and I'll be lucky to be able to be noticing these small changes as, as it develops over the days and weeks and hopefully we'll continue to be able to monitoring its growth. The roads we have decided to drive along this morning have been barren. And all that we've found is ourselves getting cold, but that can change at any moment. I've been hoping that the reports of buffalo potentially being caught by lions that was heard on the Arethusa waterhole camera that a lot of you have sent reports through would provide us with some action but there's been no sign of any buffalo kill on Arethusa and possibly it was just buffaloes I did see some tracks of what looked to be quite a large herd it was possibly just audio amongst buffalo in the herd and not necessarily being taken down by lions but then again, it is a very big area that we get to explore, as I mentioned earlier. And this means there may be things unfolding that we are unaware of. Or unaware of where exactly they are happening. This, however, is one of my favorite roads on Arethusa. And it's going to slowly meander us through back towards the airstrip. From when we get there, I'm not sure what I'm going to do next. But we'll make a plan. Start of the coalition. And then there's three younger ones that are kind of the middle age group that look all to be brothers from the same litter just judging from their size and then there's one that's slightly smaller so all about probably a six month to a year gap we haven't seen them for a long time it'll be great to see how much more they've developed over the months that we haven't seen them but it's in all likelihood they are all cousins from the same pride that peeled off together when it was their time to move out, just like Junior will be required to move out of his pride soon. He unfortunately is alone, but quite often there can be brothers and cousins of different ages that are all of a similar enough age group in order to move off together, and I'm fairly certain that's what happened with the Birmingham Coalition. That is one way that coalitions of male lions can be built or, or, or brought up as a family and then they move off simultaneously from their same pride. It's also not uncommon for an individual like Junior from the Inkahuma pride to move off alone and then come across other lone males, possibly quite a lot older than him or possibly a similar age. They will usually have a fight initially and thereafter they can make friends and team up and spend the rest of their lives with one another. So that isn't uncommon and like I say it can be uh, a meeting of two similar age lines or sometimes a much older lion accepting a younger lion into his coalition. There's no set rules but usually they do have an altercation initially 
and then kind of kiss and make up afterwards and then spend the rest of their lives together. So that is hopefully what will happen with Junior, otherwise he's going to have a lonely existence and a very difficult time trying to establish a territory of his own, especially in this area where there's a lot of large coalitions of males. So he's going to have to make friends quickly, otherwise he could end up in trouble. it with one another and even though they are joining up as a coalition in order to achieve more dominance and achieve security safety increased chances of successful hunting is there an emotional side to them and yes I, I think there could be but it's 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 a very tricky one to to be certain of but I certainly do think lions do have emotions of some degree and you can see that in their nature of how much they enjoy cuddling up with other pride mates or coalition members. And I'm sure if one of a coalition was killed by another coalition, there would be some natural emotions shown. Whoever's left alone or other pride members may miss one member of the pride because they do, they are used to spending day in and day out with one another. So there will be some emotion but at the end of the day, nature is harsh and they do need to carry on with their business, looking for their next meal, worrying about the next battle with the next pride. So sometimes, even though they may be emotional, I don't think we are completely aware of it. Or they don't possibly show it. chats about the different coalitions mission would like to know who I think is the most feared coalition in our area of operation around Juma and Arethusa and at the moment it's kind of up in the air the two Matimba males are dominant but I think their days are numbered and I think the Birmingham coalition is going to be a force to be reckoned with going forward and I think they could well become the dominant coalition of this area. So that's who I think is going to come to the forefront of the Lion Coalitions. But we'll have to wait and see. Okay, so we are at the Arethusa airstrip and just to let all of you know, apparently it is no longer going to be a dirt airstrip and they are undergoing laying a tarmac airstrip I think starting today so we'll possibly be spending a little bit less time here as the construction of the new Arethusa airstrip gets built there will understandably be a lot of noise and machinery around here Interestingly, quite a few of the airstrips within the Sabi Sands are tarmac and not dirt. And this basically just allows a larger variety of aircrafts to land here. And most guests, depending on which lodge you're going to though, most guests actually do fly in to the Sabi Sands. Often from Johannesburg, it's a nice short one hour flight 